BBB ABS training webinars. This webinar is part of a series providing an introduction to EU access and benefit sharing regulations. It was developed by the Interreg funded European Blue Biobank project. The European Blue Biobank project, or EBB, is a European Marine Biological Resource Centre project to promote compliance with access and benefit sharing frameworks for genetic resources derived from the Nagoya Protocol. It aims to facilitate sustainable access to marine biodiversity, its associated data and extractable products for local and international academia and industry users. It also aims to incentivize biodiversity conservation in coastal ecosystems and provides tools to achieve these aims. These are the EBB trace database, a searchable catalog of marine biological resources provided by the EBB Biobank, the EBB track tool for provision of macroorganisms, service supply, and biobank management, and the EBB EMBRC best practice guide, a handbook for ABS compliance, which provides recommendations to marine biological resource collections and users institutions, and the practical guide for users, seek, keep and transfer, a step-by-step -step guide to ABS compliance when utilizing marine genetic resources. This webinar is part of a series designed to provide an introduction to EU access and benefit sharing regulations for collections and users. Webinar one provides an introduction to ABS. Webinar two provides an overview of the scope of the EU ABS regulation on ABS compliance. Webinar three provides recommendations for institutions with users and collections of marine genetic resources. Webinar four, considers managing ABS compliance in collections. Webinar five, it provides an overview of compliance for users and a review of seek, keep and transfer, a step-by-step -step guide to ABS compliance when utilizing marine genetic resources. Webinar six discusses the EU registers, that is the registered collections and best practices as tools to support ABS compliance. We particularly draw your attention to the two handbooks provided by the project, the EABB EMBRC Best Practice Guide to ABS Compliance. This handbook is aimed at users, institutions and collection managers of marine biological resources. It provides an introduction, background and overview of ABS, user-friendly guidance to implementing ABS best practices for institutions. It covers a wide range of possible scenarios and includes technical guidelines and supporting material. Seek, keep, transfer is a practical guide for users of genetic resources. Users are guided through a six step process to perform ABS due diligence. And webinar five provides a full overview of the guide. The following webinar and subsequent webinars in this series have been developed as introductory guides based on the EBB handbook and step-by-step -step guide. While the authors have aimed to make the information as accurate and up-to-date as possible, ABS is complex and evolving. The authors are not responsible for the results of any actions taken by institutions or users on the basis of information that is not within this webinar nor the EBB guides. The recommendations in this webinar do not supersede official texts or substitute for ABS policies that institutions may already have in place. Further specific information and support is available, and it is recommended that dedicated ABS support is sought from either the home organisation or from the ABS competent national authority for research in their country. Webinar 5 describes the steps that should be taken before starting a fundamental or applied research project involving genetic resources to ensure compliance with EU ABS regulations and is based on the user guide Seek, Keep, Transfer, developed by the EBB project. The presentation covers the six-step iterative process that, that users are rec recommended to follow and that is based on a series of questions. Step one, where do the resources used for my project come from? Step two, is my project impacted by ABS? Step three, if so, where do I find information about ABS? Step four, if required, 
how do I negotiate ABS permits? Step five, how do I demonstrate ABS compliance? And step six, how do I manage the ABS documentation? This guidance is aimed at users of genetic resources from academia or the private sector who are conducting research on biochemical and or genetic activities of genetic resources that are either based in the European Union as they are bound by the EU ABS obligations or those outside the European Union should they decide to implement ABS best practices. To understand the different steps of this guide, you first of all need to know what is access and benefit sharing, what is ABS due diligence and which genetic resources are referred to in this guide. You will find the answers in the first two webinars of this series or directly in the first page of the Seek, Keep and Transfer guide for users. So step one involves checking the necessary information for ABS on the genetic resource. Before starting their project, users should collect and check the following critical information. The date and place the resource was accessed from, or will be if it has not yet been obtained, a description of the genetic resource, the source from which the resource was or will be directly obtained if it's obtained from a third party, and the presence or absence of rights and obligations relating to ABS and any other permits, contracts or conditions of use. It is recommended that users collect and securely store data for any and all resources entering into the research project. If you coordinate the project, you should put in place an ABS management system with database and procedures to monitor the exchange of resources within the project, ensuring that ABS necessary information is attached to each resource. It is recommended that users ensure collection of this ABS information is undertaken in the very early stages of preparation of the research project, since ABS negotiations, if required, may take time and hinder the course of your research activities. If you obtain the resources used in your project via collection on the EU ABS register or from a collection with best practices for ABS management, the resource should automatically be transferred to you with this information. In step two, users should determine whether a project is subject to access and benefit sharing obligations. Webinar one provides a useful background to this. But in summary, ABS applies to genetic resources, typically defined as any material of plant, animal, at for ABS excluding human, microbial or other origin containing functional units of heredity of actual or potential value. This would include derivatives, including naturally occurring biochemical compounds. Utilization means to conduct research and development on the genetic and or biochemical composition of genetic resources, including through the application of biotechnology. Considering the complexity of the ABS framework and the multiple layers of legal tax and varying interpretation of terms such as genetic resources and utilization, which depend on national laws, Diagnosis of whether your project is subject to ABS may prove to be a challenge. If there is any doubt, it is recommended that you consider by default that your project is subject to ABS and proceed to the subsequent steps. It is recommended that you evaluate the activities conducted in your project and if the situation is unclear, contact the ABS support team in your institution, your legal contact person or the ABS competent national authority for research in your own country for guidance. In step three, to gather ABS information, two sources of information are relevant. Uh, users should visit the online Access and Benefit Sharing Clearinghouse website. This site provides information for every country in the world on the Goya Protocol status, national ABS legislation, and contact details for the national focal point and national competent authorities. It is recommended that you write an email to the ABS national focal point or competent authority of the country of origin of the genetic resource you plan to use in order to present your project and ask whether it is necessary to obtain an ABS permit, uh, prime informed consent to obtain the resource and to negotiate benefit sharing, that's the mutually agreed terms, and if so, to obtain information about the procedure to do this. It is recommended that you ensure that you keep copies of all of the emails or other correspondence sent. 
You may also rely on local partners or your ABS support team or ABS competent national authority to obtain information. If the country is party to the Nagoya Protocol and has ABS access legislation, but your emails are left unanswered, it is recommended that you resume this action three times and that you copy the ABS competent national authority for research in your country at the third attempt and that you subsequently keep these emails. Step four covers the negotiation of the ABS prior formed con consent, mutually agreed terms and the internationally recognised certificate of compliance. If the country of origin of the resource confirms that your project falls within the scope of its ABS law, you need to enter into negotiation with its competent authorities. Procedures vary between countries, but you will usually be required to fill in a form, sometimes using an online platform, which is usually in English, to obtain prior informed consent and to negotiate the mutually agreed terms. The competent national authority of the country of origin of the resource should send permits to the ABS Clearing House, which will then issue an internationally recognised certificate of compliance. This number must subsequently be capped with the resource and transferred with it to subsequent users. To inform the competent authorities, it is recommended that you prepare a clear and concise description of your project and of the resources using the list in step one and include a summary of the expected outcomes and impacts of your project. You are likely to be able to obtain permits to access resources more easily if your project is conducted as part of collaboration with partners from the pervading country. And such partnerships can be included in the mutually agreed terms as a direct non-monetary benefit. Step five is the declaration of ABS compliance made at due diligence checkpoints. The competent national authority in the state where utilization is carried out can advise on how and when due diligence declarations should be made. It is recommended that you contact your ABS support team, ABS competent national authority and funding agencies to get information on European and national platforms for ABS compliance control. You should make your due diligence declaration once steps one to four have been completed and at any other required checkpoints. It's recommended that users familiarise themselves with the ABS compliance control mechanisms and the sanctions for non-compliance in your country. And finally, step six refers to keeping ABS documentation. In the EU, ABS compliance documentation must be kept for 20 years and transferred to any subsequent users. You should note that subsequent users may be required to reapply for ABS compliance particularly if the existing MAT, the mutually agreed terms, does not cover their intended utilisation. It's recommended that you implement a secure data management system for ABS documentation of all of the resources used in your project, including for those not impacted by ABS at the time of utilisation. This is in case ABS legislation evolves in the future. To avoid long-term ABS data management genetic resources used in your project, Alternatively, you may choose to deposit the resources in a collection or biorepository with a clear ABS and or quality management system. In summary, we have discussed the seek, keep and transfer process. Mutually agreed terms may allow you to store the resource, but subsequent reuse, and they're specifically permitted in the terms, will usually require users to reiterate the step-by-step -step process again. So please do be aware of this. And finally, we hope that you have enjoyed this webinar. The next and final webinar in this series will provide information on the EU registers of collections and best practices. And these will also be of interest to users of genetic resources. And finally, the authors of this presentation would like to draw your attention to some of the notes in the disclaimer the authors of the EBB ABS webinar series are not responsible for the results of any actions taken by institutions or users on the basis of information contained neither within this webinar nor the EBB guides. We have striven to make the information as accurate and up to date as possible, but for further guidance it is recommended that you seek dedicated ABS support from your organisation and or from the ABS competent national authority for research. 
in your country. And thank you again for listening.